Hey everyone, I'm Harrison Reed, and today I'm going to talk to you about writing commentaries for medical journals or other academic journals. Now, one of the things I care the most about is helping healthcare professionals and academics disseminate their ideas, publish their work, and have an impact on the world around them. Commentaries are an excellent way of doing all of those things, and they tend to be shorter than other academic articles, so you can do so with a lower investment of time and energy. Commentary articles are opinion-based articles, so they're also called editorials or perspective pieces, but you can kind of think of them as the op-ed of the academic writing world. They can still have a huge impact, even though they tend to be shorter and tend to have fewer references than a traditional academic article. So what I'm going to do today is break down a six-step process to writing commentaries on any topic to try to make this a little less daunting or intimidating for people who are trying commentaries for the first time or who struggle in writing opinion-based writing. So the first step in writing a commentary is to pick the topic, to pick the subject matter in which we're going to write. This is probably the most important step in the whole process, so I want you to spend a little bit of time here. I want you to do some introspection, some soul searching, to come up with the perfect topic for you as the author. Now, you're going to want to consider things like your knowledge, your experience, your expertise, and also your unique perspective and your passion. There's probably a lot of topics that you know a lot about, but you might not feel particularly passionate about them. There's also things you may care a lot about, but might not have the requisite knowledge to write an academic article on those topics. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be an expert or the leading expert on everything you write about. In fact, it might be kind of nice if you're not the number one expert in the field because you might bring a unique perspective, something that's not already being churned out into the academic dialogue. So I want you to focus in on that nice intersection of your unique experience and expertise, your perspective, and your passion to zero in on a topic that you care about. It's often easier to address a problem or something that's going on in the world. It could be a current event or it could be something that's not so timely, but it should be something that you can address in a relatively short article. Once you've come up with your topic, you're going to want to do the research. Now, even if you are an expert on your particular field or topic, you still want to do things like a literature review to address any blind spots you might have. I actually like to get creative in the research phase here and do things outside what I would normally do for a review article. So for instance, when I wrote on the Veterans Health Administration scandal in 2014, I did all of the normal reading of articles about it, but I also interviewed former employees of the VA to see how they felt about the scandal and to get an inside peek behind the scenes. I ended up using some quotes from those interviews in the article, which gave it a nice, unique journalistic slant, and I think added an, an element to it that I otherwise wouldn't have had if I hadn't invested so much time in the research phase. Now, your research can be extensive, but keep in mind that commentary articles usually only have a few references, so there's going to be a lot of your research that doesn't make it into the article as a direct reference, but it will color the entire article, it will make it more informed, make it more authentic, and add depth to the writing. Okay, step three is where you're going to write your thesis. Now, a thesis for any article is that one central idea around which the entire article revolves. So your thesis is not going to just tell what the subject matter or topic is, but it's going to give a very specific stance on that topic. It's going to be the main point you're trying to make. So for instance, when I wrote my article, Healthcare Owes Us Real Mental Health Support, the thesis was actually right there in the title. You knew what I was going to write about and you knew how I felt about that topic. Now look, this does not mean that your thesis has to be your title. In most cases, it actually shouldn't be. But my point is, is that your thesis should be obvious, big, and bold, so that there is no guesswork around what this article is actually about. If you're about to start writing and you feel like you have more than one thesis, then you probably need to go back a step or two and do a little bit more focusing of your topic. An article of this length usually can't support more than one thesis, so if you have multiple theses, thesis, thesi, you're probably going to need to narrow it down so that you have just one main central point of your article. Once you've got your one central thesis, you can start outlining your supporting points and your supporting evidence. 
This is an important phase because this is where the rest of your writing is going to flow. So I want you to come up with two or three very strong points that support your thesis, that make it true, or that are the reason that you believe that thesis to be so. For each of these points, they should also have their own supporting evidence. It could be a reference that you're going to use for the article, or it could just be something else that you're pulling from your research or from your knowledge base, but each of these points should have their own supporting evidence. When you outline all of these together, you actually have a nice simple framework or an outline from which you can start writing. You have your thesis and then your two or three supporting points, and then the evidence that support those points. If you're one of those people that the writing just flows through you, you can probably start writing off of a simple basic outline as, as simple as this one. But if you're a little more intimidated by the blank page, maybe you want to outline a little bit more, flesh this out so that you really just have to fill in smaller blanks when you actually start writing. All right, from your simple outline, we just need to add a few flourishes here. What you really want to do next is to create a strong opening hook. Now, commentaries are a type of writing where you really want the attention and the emotional investment of your reader. So you're going to want to write a hook that reels your reader in and that shows them the importance of this article, that makes it real to them, that makes them care about this topic and the outcome. So if you're writing about a really abstract idea, this might mean you need to start your commentary off in a really concrete place. Show how these ideas impact the real world. It might be through a hypothetical or a real story or anecdote. Uh, it could just be showing a scenario and how this all plays out in the real world. You can get creative as you want here. There's no hard and fast rules for writing a hook, but it should be something that really resonates with readers and ties directly into the central point of your thesis. So you can get creative here, try a few of these out, write multiple hooks and see which one feels the best. But when you're writing the final version of your commentary, pick just one opening hook, the best one, and run with that. All right, the very last stage here is where we're going to make a call to action. This is where we tell our readers what we want them to do. Now that we've hooked them in, we've reeled in their attention, we've gotten them emotionally invested, we gave them a powerful thesis, and we outlined all of this supporting evidence based on our research, what are we going to do with all of that energy? Well, we're going to ask our readers to do something about it. And look, I know this means you probably don't have enough space to do a how-to guide on solving all of the world's problems right here in your commentary. So these calls to action can be a little more vague or they can be specific depending on your subject matter and whatever is appropriate for it. So you may just want more discussion around an issue or maybe you want additional research on a topic. Or maybe there are things like additional funding or changes to regulations or legislation that might affect the issue you're talking about. Or maybe the readers really can do small, specific steps in their daily lives to affect the issue you're talking about, and you're going to ask them to do that. No matter what, the great thing about the call to action is that it leaves your writing on a positive note, especially if the subject matter is a little bit dark, a little bit depressing, a little bit you know, of a downer. A call to action can leave your reader feeling hopeful about the topic and about you as a writer. And hopeful people are more driven to action. Optimism can be a powerful fuel driving them forward. If you leave them in despair, they may feel like the whole thing is hopeless and why bother? We can't change it anyways. So a call to action should show a path forward. Leave your reader feeling like they can actually do something about the situation or that there is hope out there in the world so that you know, they really do feel like they can contribute. So when you've done all of these steps, your outline looks a little more complete. You've got a hook, you've got your thesis that's going to appear in the first one to two paragraphs, you've got your supporting evidence that flows out of those supporting points that you've written, and then you end with a strong call to action. It's a very simple, straightforward outline that can be used on just about any topic out there. So if you follow these six steps, the great thing about it is that your writing will never feel repetitive because you'll add creativity along the way. You'll add creativity to your opening and your hook. You'll do interesting research to add flavor and personality to the writing. And you'll have an interesting call to action. You'll really want to move your reader towards action. All of these things can create unique commentaries, but you'll never feel lost and without direction if you have a simple framework on which you can fall back. So 
I hope that these six steps were really helpful for you. If you feel like this was helpful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and share this. If you're really struggling with writing, go to harrisonreadwriting.com. I have a five-step guide that'll get you off the ground, especially if this is your first article that you're writing. And I've got other articles that help you through writing process or explain things or demystify the publication world. Uh, so it's a lot of useful resources that you can continually go back to. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun talking to you, and I hope you'll tune in for future videos. I'll talk to you next time.